This video is a quick review of some of the Zoom sessions that we've had over Module 8. We're looking at one sample confidence intervals. In both chapters, in Chapter 7 and Chapter 8, we're looking at two different kinds of population parameters. We're looking at the population mean, that's in the case that the random variable happens to be a numerical variable, and we're looking at the, at the population proportion, the proportion of the population that satisfies a particular category if we're looking at the categorical variable. We use three distribution diagrams in Chapter 7 to help us write scripts for solving hypothesis testing. We will also use three distribution diagrams in Chapter 8 to write confidence intervals. So let's review them just real quickly, some of the features of them. In the case that we're looking at a categorical variable, then, we're look, then the parameter that we're interested in in this population is the proportion of the population that satisfies that category. We don't know what the entire population is, so we can't find that proportion, but we'll do a point estimate by taking a sample of some size, size n, and count up how many successes there are, we usually call that r, and then calculate a sample proportion which would be r divided by n. We know that under the right circumstances, if we looked at every single possible sample of size n and calculated the proportion for each of those samples, then we could get a distribution of sample proportions and that this distribution will be normally distributed. The mean of that normal distribution the mean of all those sample proportions turns out to be this parameter that we were looking for. Furthermore, the standard deviation of all of these sample proportions will be the square root of this p times q, which is the probability of failure, 1 minus p, divided by n. So there's a big connection between this, this distribution and this distribution. This distribution is related to a z distribution because we could just change all of these values that are here to their z scores. And then this distribution would look like this one, but it would be measured in standard deviations instead of in whatever we were measuring this in. Let's look at the other three distribution diagram. That's the one where we're looking at uh, at a numerical variable, and so we're interested in the mean of, of that numerical variable. And uh, of course, there'll be a standard deviation for this distribution. We don't know what that mean is, but we approximate it by taking a sample of size n, calculating the mean of that sample. Then we think about every possible sample of that particular size and look at all the means of every one of those, then it would give us a distribution. And the wonderful thing is that under very mild conditions, that distribution is going to be normally distributed. Not only that, the mean of this distribution of sample means is going to be this parameter that we are concerned about. The standard deviation of this is going to be this standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n. Because we, we never will know what that standard deviation is, we approximate this standard error. Remember, we're calling these standard errors. We calculate that standard error as being the, the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Because we're doing that approximation, we'll need to use a a t value here, but we convert all of these values to t values much like we did in the other setting. And so the t value is our best approximation of how many standard deviations any one of these values up here is away from, from, uh, from the mean. And of course the z value does the same thing. It measures the number of standard deviations we are away from the mean. Okay, those two uh, situations are going to be useful to us. This middle distribution is very powerful because it captures the parameter of the original population that we're interested in, do, in studying. 
think of this normal distribution as representing a the, that second distribution, whether we're talking about means or whether we're talking about uh, proportions. So this is the mean of the sample stat. That means it's the mean of the X bars or else it's the mean of the P hats, one of those two. And so that's what the mean of this distribution is. Now, if we're interested in a confidence level, say that there's a 79, 82, I can change this confidence level to, to different values. Let's say that we're looking at a 89% confidence level. Then if we could find a margin of error, that's the distance between this mean and a point up here, and uh, the margin of error is that amount below, so that the area under the curve, the probability, the amount of the population that's between this margin of error below that mean and that margin of error above that mean is 89%, then we know that 89% of the time, 89% of the cases where we take a sample, that that sample statistic, that's either an X bar or a P hat, is going to be in this region 89% of the time. Uh, there is an 11% of the time that it's either up here in this top tail or down here in this bottom tail. All right, so what we're going to do to build our confidence interval is this. We're going to take that sample statistic that we've got and we're going to build an interval about that sample statistic that goes up one margin of error and down one margin of error associated with this particular uh, confidence level. 89% of the time this sample statistic is going to be between here and here. And notice that if it is ever between those two that this red bar does in fact capture that uh, mean of the sample statistics which is the same as our parameter. So let's figure out how to find that margin of error. The confidence level, CL, will be given. Somebody will say that the confidence level is a certain percentage. Where to start depends on the population parameter you want to estimate. You see, you will start with the Z distribution if the population parameter is a proportion. We'll start with the T distribution if the sample uh, if, if the population parameter is a mean. That's because in the three distribution diagram, that third distribution will be a Z distribution for proportions and will be a T distribution for, uh, for a mean. So let's say that we're looking for a confidence interval for a mean. So let's look at this example. Here we've got a confidence level of 87%. Let's say that the sample size in this case, just read the problem there, and it told us the sample size was 14. They've already calculated the, the sample mean, which is X bar is 35, and the standard deviation is 45. There's the given information in this particular problem. In the problem that we're looking at, the confidence level is 87%. That's 87% of the area is right here. That means that outside of this area, in those two tails, is going to be 1 minus that 87%. So here we're writing a script. Notice that the confidence level is the 87%, n is equal to 14, the x bar is 35, and so on. If, if this is the confidence level, then the area outside of the confidence level, this red area, is going to be alpha. And the area in just one of those tails will be alpha divided by two. Uh, right here, I'm trying to find this T value. Then what I need to give R, I, I'll use a QT distribution because I'm looking for a quantile. I've, I've got some areas and I'm looking for a quantile. So I'll need a QT. I need to tell R what this area down here is. 
I can see two ways to find that area. Either take the confidence level plus a tail, that would be that area, or I could take one, the total area under the curve, and subtract this tail up here, that's the amount that's too much. So there's two ways to do that calculation. So here's our script, how to, how to do those two calculations. We've got the degree of freedom, we've got alpha, one minus the confidence level, that's the area in the two tails. So the area in a single tail will be alpha divided by two, and then we've got uh, T is going to be QT of the confidence level plus a tail. That would be one way to find that area. Of course, with the degree of freedom, that'll tell us the T value. Or alternatively, we could uh, do that calculation by looking at QT of one minus the upper tail. Those tails are the, exactly the same size uh, with the degree of freedom and notice that the results are the same. And so now we can easily find the margin of error because if we can find the standard error, that is the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample statistic, then we can just t times that in the case of when we're looking at mu because t is telling me how many standard deviations I am away and SE is telling me what the standard deviation is or in the case of proportions it'll be Z times SE. So in our case when we were looking at the at a numerical variable and so we we're looking at the mean then we need to calculate uh, this standard error and we can do that. So there's the standard error is going to be S divided by the square root of of n. We've previously defined all of those things and then I've got some notes here telling you what it would be the standard error would be the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n in, uh, in the proportion case. So the margin of error is going to be that t that we found in the previous slide times this standard error. Then the lower bound of the confidence interval will be x bar minus me and the upper bound will be x bar plus me. Now there's three ways that confidence intervals are written. As an interval like you did in an algebra class where you used interval notation. So this is the sample mean minus a margin of error and the sample mean plus a margin of error. As an inequality Notice that it's an interval and as an inequality, there's something very similar. This number is that lower bound and this number is the upper bound. We're looking for all the x's that are between here and here. And the third way that it is, is to state the sample statistic plus or minus the margin of error. And in our case, the sample statistic was 35. That was our x bar. And our margin of error, we worked to find that and so sometimes a, a confidence interval is written like 35 plus or minus that margin of error. Okay, a quick run through of module eight, one sample confidence intervals. We'll talk more about how to write these up in your written reports uh, during the next week.